we should have come in, we should have come in. I understand that the team is playing a strategy, of course, but this is last minute job. This is an emergency scenario. You've got to fucking take the lead, asshole. Okay? Take the fucking lead. Peter. Wah, wah, wah. Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. That was such a cool Grand Prix, the Dutch Grand Prix, wasn't it? Oh man. I tell you guys, it's such a special track for me. It really is, as I think many of you know, if you've been listening to my other episodes, Zandvoort was my home track. It still is my home track. It'll go down a very, very special place for me. I The track knowledge I have around there is very very good I love that place it's very very dear to me and it's funny that I think one or two of the Formula 1 guys have actually raced there before but they none of them actually know some of the uh, the little tweaks I suppose you could say uh, for instance even number turn 3 now unless like I was saying on my other podcast episode unless they've actually changed turn 3 in other words, if they've taken out some of the camber in the corner, they're taking the wrong line. What, like, if you've actually noticed, guys, they're coming out of turn one, into turn two, that fast right, then into that immediate left, and you see the way they actually take the outside line? What they should be doing is taking the inside line, going down deep into the corner. That's actually the line. Now, unless... I can't see something now on, on the actual on the actual camera and they've actually changed the turn completely around. Well then, fine. But I, I don't see much. Anyway, but it was a really cool Grand Prix, wasn't it? In fact, guys, what we're going to do here is we're going to do a uh, split screen here. We're going to saying that, you know, these tr conditions are incredibly tricky, right? I mean, one false move and you're fucked. You're, you're done. You know what I mean? Um... And at the same time, why didn't they all come in? I don't understand it. Like, and, and like I was saying, I know the team, you know, they're not ready. And trust me, no one was ready for that rain. But just literally light switch, bang, on. Pissing down out of the heavens. And you're like, whoa, what the fuck? But still, you know what? You got to do what you got to do. And the amount of time it would have taken the team to actually get the, the different tires on the car... Yeah, of course, it's going to take a bit of time, right? Because they're going to be flying around. But it's their fucking job. They should be used to this shit, you know? They should be re used to getting getting in those emergency scenarios. And it's going to take them a bit of time, of course. But that's okay. But just be prepared for it, you know? And the amount of time, like Perez now, he came in. Beautiful move by him. He was seven seconds a lap faster than Verstappen. Okay, Verstappen was in the lead on, was it lap two or three? And Perez came back out again. Seven seconds, because Perez was on the intermediates versus everybody else on tires. So the amount of time they lost, they would have gained back in the pit lane on the opening lap if they came in at, la at the end of lap one. Do you know what I mean? So, yes, you're going to lose a bit of time over here versus, okay, if I keep going, how much time am I going to lose? And that's the way it is. Now... Fortunately for most of most of the drivers, for Verstappen anyway, he got out okay. So it actually worked out okay for him. But you can't be fucking around with this shit, lads. You just can't. Do you know? Anyway, let's let's keep going here. Now, now they're all coming in here now. Lap two. Thank God. And Norris, and then I love the way Russell took the lead. Oh, Hamilton's bitching again. Like, alright, alright, I'm gonna pause here now. Sorry, guys, one second now. Like, <laughs> Hamilton, just shut up. Alright, just shut, just stop your fucking bitching and moaning. Like, here's the thing, guys, alright? gonna be a fucking ulcer I swear to god you go out and you race sometimes the team is gonna call it wrong sometimes the driver's gonna call it wrong now 
the end of the day, it was very obvious that it was pissing fucking rain. And it was very obvious for a driver to make a quick decision to come into the pit lane and have the team get the fucking tires on the fucking car. And he's putting it down, oh, we should have come in, we should have come in. I understand that the team is playing a strategy, of course, but this is last minute job. This is an emergency scenario. You've got to fucking take the lead, asshole. Okay? Take the fucking lead and stop fucking around and bitching and moaning and complaining to the team. Like, do you realize how much the, the, the psyche affects the team? Like, how are they still holding on to Hamilton is beyond me, you know? Now, I do rate him. I really, really, truly do rate him. But I don't rate him that much. Simply because all his fucking complaining, man. Th th that, that's not being a winner. That's not being a leader. That's not being a true champion. And blaming your teammates. And blaming the team and whatever. <sighs> anyway, the screen here, guys. The lovely thing about the Red Bull car is that it produces grip. It doesn't get grip, it fucking produces grip. I mean, this car is a freak of fucking nature. Like, there's two different type of driving styles normally. One, you brake in a straight line, slow it all down, and then turn in, get to the apex. When you get to the apex, you get on the power. That's the kind of driving style number one. Then there's driving style number two. Driving style number two, and very like actually the Formula 2000 cars I used to drive in America and Canada. Brake in a straight line, and as you're turning in, you're getting on the throttle. Because those Formula 2000 cars used to actually generate grip as you're actually driving into the corner. And actually, if you weren't on the throttle, you were losing grip. So it, like, it was a very, very funny um, thing to get used to at the start, because you're like, jeez, I gotta slow the fucking thing. Oh, geez. But the more, you, the more you actually pushed on through, the better it was. Now, Formula 1 cars in general, they seem to be option number one. Break in a straight line and you can turn in and you can carry huge amounts of speeds with the Formula 1 cars, obviously. Huge amounts of grip, mechanical and aero grip. Um, but the Red Bull is, it seems to see, or seems to me that the more Verstappen is getting on the power, the more grip he gets. And it does look like the Formula 2000 car I used to drive. And now, to be fair, of course, it would take a little bit of time to get used to that. And it does. I mean, it took me a couple of days to get used to, you know, just kind of really get it into my fucking blood, my DNA, you know, to turn in, uh, power on through the corner. And people can say, oh, well, you know, Perez, is, he's not up to speed. Well, Perez has won already in the Red Bull. He's won races. So it's not like he's not up to speed. He's just not getting the car behind him. So, back to Monza. I think Monza's going to be great because, again, the Adrian Newey car, the Red Bull, you're turning in, and Monza is all about engine speed anyway. It's all about getting out of the corner. Now, we'll be, we'll be doing a preview on this in the next few days anyway, guys. So, I think it's going to be very interesting. Uh, I think you're going to have Mercedes up there, Red Bull, obviously. Uh, McLaren definitely got... I mean, the pace of them this weekend was really good. Even though fucking Norris screwed it up, didn't he? Like, going down to Schievelak, down that right-hander, okay? Remember, if you listen to some of my other episodes, I was saying that Schievelak, going down that right-hander, into the next two right-handers, and then the next left, that was the key of Zandvoort. That was the real key. Now, if you watch the qualifying... You would have seen that, that if you watched the uh, the Verstappen and Norris on board. Now, actually, guys, sorry. Now, I, I tried to do a, a YouTube video on this, but they fucking took it down. <sighs> Typical. Um, so, you can see the two of them. And Verstappen and Norris were neck and neck. And all of a sudden, going into Schievelak, down the hill, Verstappen got to the apex, which he fucking should be doing. Norris missed the apex. And actually it caused him to lose the momentum because you need to get that momentum guys guys going down that hill because you carry the momentum into the next three bends that's crucial around Zandvoort and you could just see it on on um, on the qualifying when they do a back-to-back -back. in fact you should YouTube it guys unfortunately I had to 
take the bloody thing down they wouldn't let me put it up unfortunately so sorry about that but it, check it out guys because you can literally see Norris misses the apex loses that momentum all the way through now and going through that long left hander he actually just got a little bit of a snap on in the back and he lost just like I'd say maybe a tenth now he lost most of his time and Verstappen was a half a second fucking ahead of everybody else so it wasn't an unbelievable lap from Verstappen it was a good lap that's exactly what he's paid to do <laughs> it was just everybody else just didn't do their job they just didn't do their job so anyway guys um, it was a good race though and I can't wait to see next weekend in, uh, in Monza man oh my god and so guys we're just going to close it off now uh, well done to Verstappen and Red Bull though great result today fantastic great to see Alonso up there as well great to see Pierre Gasly up there too um, really happy for him really happy for him but stop this 8th place trophy horse shit now lads would you please Jesus anyway so guys I'll be back during the week with a Monza preview and I'll talk to you then. Bye.